Hey everybody, it's Feng here again with this week's uh, video tutorial. And uh, what you see here on screen is what we're going to be covering. Uh, I have a little cold, so hopefully uh, I don't sound too strange on the video. But uh, anyway, so what we're looking here is a um, another demo I done in front of the class. This is actually for what is this class for? Production painting uh, two, I believe. So where we cover some more advanced uh, ways of painting. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing like the other tutorials, and I'm going to uh, basically uh, first show you the image. So let's zoom in here a little bit. Um, so this image is a little bit different than the, the usual ones you've seen uh, in the past. This one's a little bit looser, a little bit more, uh, I guess, gestural, uh, more energy put into it. So it's just trying to show students a uh, fast, pretty pretty fast way to get the design out and uh, how to show it accurately, and but uh, without spending too much time on it. It's the idea of this painting is to uh, be able to quickly capture an idea. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn off all these layers so you can see well, how this all came about. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we started with a basically a blank uh, background here with just some value. I typically don't start on uh, any white background. I think white is too harsh. Uh, even when I'm drawing something, I draw on uh, either a medium gray or some kind of valued background. Um, so that way you have a nice uh, medium value to work with instead of having a white. And also on this PC screen, white is very, very bright. So, okay. So what I've done here is basically um, start with a silhouette. So that's it, just with a big giant brush, and then uh, basically uh, put in a giant silhouette. We're gonna put a ground. Uh, the horizon in this shot is slightly tilted because the the uh, design here has a little bit of forward forward aggression. Let me uh, start a layer here so I can put some notes. All right, it's got a nice forward stance going this way, so I thought it'd be quite nice to continue the horizon line in the same way so you have a focal point like this putting the weapon and the vehicle all going towards that direction and so cause remember if you watch the previous tutorials a, the focal point of a of a image or the energy uh, direction of an image is quite important because uh, it kind of tells a story and give the viewers a sense of uh, I guess speed and aggression uh, when you look at an image such as this one so you want to be able to capture that um, okay so after this I think I believe I put in some background you can see all of this right now has no value basically it's all very very dark almost black right because everything's on a layer this allows me to individually control what I want for each layer value wise for now it's just a silhouette to hold the shape um, but we're still very conscious of perspective of where the viewers eye is so it's not just random backgrounds but planned out okay. here's a little bit of uh, sky tone so the so the sky has a little bit of value as well and then I generally darken the ground up a little bit so the sky has a higher value read so this is kind of the first phase, the planning stage, but this is actually one, part of the most important stages you do uh, because this captures your painting. If you shrink it small, all the elements are already in place. Your main subject matter, the foreground elements and the background elements and the lighting scenario, it's all pretty much there. So it's crucial to get this step uh, correct. And so the next step is basically bringing up the values. You can see here, I'll zoom in here a bit just taking the silhouette and start blocking out some very simple values to define the form. Uh, for example, on his leg here, let me, uh, this layer is clean, okay. Oops. Okay, so if I turn this off, you can see here, There's you could interpret this leg any way you want. I mean, I could put this leg into the front and put this one in the back. Uh, because it's a silhouette, there is no, I guess, uh, 3D form definition by doing this step here, I start pulling this leg into the front, this one goes toward the back, there is a sense of above and below, for example there's a form turn on these shapes here, there's a form turn here, All right, so this is a uh, what you call it, a down slope, this is an upper slope, this is more down slope, it goes this way, and it goes this way. Right, started using value to define, and this is one surface, this is another surface, right, so you see this kind of cylindrical turn. And this is important in the early phases of form definition because from that is how you're going to base the rest of your lighting and all your uh, design on. So what I do here is basically define all those elements. So I'll turn that on and off again. 
Okay. And now I'm starting to extract the shape out from the background. You can see I always have my black and white layer on here. So you turn this on. That the values here, turn this layer off. Around this, these areas are merging into the background. So what I want to do is to separate those out. So by turning this layer on here, I added some volumetric fog to basically uh, separate these forms out from each other. You can see on and off. Now this vehicle, whoops, wrong layer. This vehicle now stands in the front. Turn that off, helping the viewer uh, see here much better. Okay. And with that, we just continue doing more detailing. Uh, zoom in here, show you a little bit more. Again, this tutorial is quite fast. This was done um, probably under an hour and a half uh, at most in class. So we never get super, super detailed in here. But I do want to show students how we could define certain areas. And even for a finished painting, even if you're doing this for a client and you want it to be more refined, you don't need to really detail everything. You don't need to draw all this stuff out because it's too busy. What you want to do is focus on the important areas and for a vehicle like this, uh, the important areas are going to be around these points here. right? Because just like a creature or a human being, the uh, vehicles, most of them at least, have some kind of feature like a face or somewhere where the viewer wants to look at. And in this case, it's definitely here. This is like an insect type of uh, um, uh, mechanical robot. So it has, it has a face and the tendency is people look at where the faces are. So your focal detail is going to start from here somewhere and it's going to kind of expand out slightly into these directions. So all the areas around here you want to kind of define a little bit. You can almost let the stuff over here go, especially if you're a little rushed on time. You can, I probably never touched this again. It's probably left just the way it is uh, from even for the finished version. Uh, same with the background. You touch them up slightly, but not necessarily a crazy finish. And what that does is it gives you a nice read, right? You have your foreground, background, middle ground read, which is your three layers. You got one, two, three. Uh, so that's just your compositional layers. And then on top of that, you have your focus layers. So you have one, two, and then the rest of this is like three, four, five, six, right? So the eye kind of flows around the page. And this makes the painting a lot more interesting than if I was to go in here and detail every single thing out. If I did that, what happens you end up with a painting that looks like wallpaper it's generally we call it uh, or texture because everything for example if I went in here and detailed the crap out of this one like super refined this is super refined this is all super refined everything is super refined everything what happens is it's going to start flattening it out because there's too much stuff going on um, things in the background make it go away it's even on the vehicle itself make some of the stuff go away it gives a lot of energy gives a life gives it more um, your eye to see to flow around the image Okay, so um, anyways, that's why we don't do overly detailed things. Okay, so this is just one pass on details. Here I start adding a little bit of um, a color to the scene. So what I did is I added a little bit of blue, a little bit of hue purple kind of colors to just give it a little bit more life. And also that color here contradicts, uh, it's a complementary color to the, um, to the brown yellowish colors.